hi, hi. It's our friendly neighborhood VTuber Suvi here again with a new tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to use depth of field effect in VC phase. Basically to blur out the background. So today we're gonna be using a depth of field post-processing shader to add effect to the room setup. So for today's tutorial, you will need a room setup, which means that you should build some kind of room behind your avatar, because we obviously cannot blur a background that doesn't exist. So if you have never tried this before, do check out my previous tutorials where we build a room around our avatar in VC phase. So check that out first, and then today we shall look into some nice effects you can add to your camera. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so once you have imported your VR model to Unity and drag it into the scene, the next step for us is to start looking into the actual post-processing effect. Now, however, do keep in mind that the specific effect, the depth of field, will only work if you have your background as part of your model. So, for example, if you have like a room setup or something, then this will work but uh, it will not work with transparent background. So the first step we need to do is create some kind of room here quickly around our avatar, and then we can test this effect. So to do that, let's simply just create an empty scene node under our avatar, call it room, and then fill it with various kinds of walls and objects. Okay, now obviously you can make this whatever you want it to be, like an actual room or an actual background or whatever. Anyway, now that we have some kind of setup here done, the next step for us is to create the actual post-processing effect. So let's create it under the room. So select the room node and then just, uh, well, if we want to toggle this effect on and off, then we could just create a new and call it like a um, post-processing or depth of field. Let's just call it the DOF, so depth of field, like so. And uh, we shall add a component. So click Add Component, and then search for VSF, and uh, we'll go with the effect depth of field. So what this will basically do is it allows us to set a specific depth of field and we can use a dynamic target. So we can focus on our avatar's head, so keep our avatar always in focus while then blurring everything else. So let's give this a try by creating an empty node to our head because by default our head node is not exactly where we want to focus. Like as you can see, the head node is around here. So if we want to focus somewhere right here in front of our eyes, we will actually need to create a new target. So let's add a new empty here and let's call it DOF target, like so. And next we shall place this right in front of our head, basically where we want the depth of field to keep focusing. So let's just put it here, somewhere on the eye level, like so. Okay, so next thing we'll select the DOF object and uh, we drag the DOF target to the dynamic target field, like so. Okay, and then of course remember to check this one so we will have it in use. Okay, and the next thing is uh, we need to check this one on as well and then we could adjust these values. Now, obviously, this will be a bit tricky to set up in Unity because you probably cannot see that without an actual post-processing setup in your project. So we'll just have to guess some values here. So we'll set the blur value to maximum. This will affect how big the blur 
actual blur effect is. But then we have these camera settings here that we need to toggle. So let's uh, set down the aperture a little bit. And uh, we can probably set down the focal length a little bit. You will have to test this out unless you know what all these values mean. Or also unless you test with the Unity post-processing setup. So we shall set it to something and after that we can export our model into VSF avatar format and see how it looks like in VC face. So let's try that next. So again, select your avatar, go to VSF SDK, export avatar bundle. Okay, so now we are in VC face and as you can see, the blur is indeed affecting our avatar. Now we can keep moving the camera around and as you can see, our character still stays in focus while the background is blurred. Obviously, the further away you go, of course, then the effect will be less prominent. And when we go really close, you see that the place where we place the object is staying in focus while everything else blurs. So try different settings in Unity until you find the kind of a depth of field effect values that work for your specific use case. You may also want to place the target somewhere else, like if you keep rotating around your character very often, then maybe maybe the target could be like inside the head. Otherwise, when you watch from the side, your character will be really out of focus. Like so. Now, just like everything else, this can of course be turned on and off. And I shall show you that next. So let's say we wanted to turn this effect on and off. We could do that simply by creating an animation that turns this component on and off. So let's create that quickly. And we can do that by creating first a temporary animator. So simply create, then select animator controller, and then rename it to something like temporary or something. Then we enter the play mode, like so. And the next step is we need to drag in the temporary animator to our avatar, which then sets our avatar to the default pose. And after that, we should be able to animate, animate the avatar. So let's go to the animations and then we can create a new clip and let's call this, uh, let's call this DOF on like so. And now what we do with this animation is simply click record, then select the DOF component. Since it's currently set on, let's just click it off first and then click it back on. Then we can do that for the next frame as well. So click it off and on again, like so. And then leave record mode. And now we'll set the default mode of this DOF animation to off. So just deselect it like that. Okay. And next step, we need to create the actual um, blend shape, but first leave the play mode. And now if it did actually get turned back on, then just disable it so that we make sure that this default state is off. Okay. So next let's create a blend shape clip. And again, we'll do that by going to our avatars blend shape index. You can find that by clicking your avatar and then scrolling down until you find the blend shape avatar here. Just double click that and it will open it. And let's, let's create a blend shape clip here. And we'll just call it as well DOF on, like so, and save. And next go to your avatar and then you will have to use the VSF animations component. If you don't have it, then you need to search and add this to your avatar. But since I already have it here, I'm just going to add a new one. So I'm going to click plus and then I'll select the DOF on like so. And next to the animation, we'll add the DOF on that we just added like so. And now when we export this avatar, we should be able to test this out in VC phase. Okay. And now as we load in VC phase, you can see that the effect is currently not in use. And next we can turn it on. So let's go to settings and then 
we need to go to the expression settings and then scroll down all the way until you find the DOF on and then bind it to a hotkey like so and then we should be able to get it working and as you can see it turns on and it turns off like so now obviously you could also animate while use using animators but that's a bit more work so if you have that kind of question do join the discord and maybe we can discuss how to do those effects i hope you liked today's tutorial and remember to also add the vc face static component to your room's main node i totally forgot to add that during the tutorial but you will need that to keep your room stationary also, remember that you can also utilize this specific uh, tutorial with all the other post-processing effects that are available to VC phase. There is a component for each of these. So to play around with, there's Vignet, there's color correction and so on. You can do a lot of amazing effects using them. Anyway, if you like the tutorial, consider subscribing down below as well as smashing the bell button to stay tuned with all my latest tutorials. I do also have a comfy discord where you can ask any questions related to these tutorials. And on Tuesdays these days, I do stream VTuber Tech News on Twitch. So if you're interested in more tech-oriented streams where I usually open up Unity and work on my own setup or some other VTuber tech-related stuff, do check those out. Anyway, see you next time, cuties. Bye-bye!